There's something so deliriously harsh to me about the term save scum. Save scum. To save scum, that is to reload a checkpoint, to undo the consequences of a narrative or mechanical choice made in a video game by rolling back to a previous save, purely because things didn't go your way, it's clearly seen by some as not only unsportsmanlike, but it renders you sub-pond life. Reject cowardice, live with your mistakes, adapt, overcome, or perish with honour. Anything but using the save system, I guess. And, well, it may shock you to know, that like the entire rest of the world it would seem, I have been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3. It's just that at certain points, especially early on, I have been save scumming like crazy. And you know, sorry to all the weirdos that offends for some reason, because obviously on its face, the idea that you would be negatively judged for engaging with a game you bought in whatever way you felt like, as long as it wasn't affecting the play sessions of other people, is extremely silly and shouldn't be taken seriously. To resolve the video's title up front, save Scum and Baldur's Gate 3 all you want because it's your game and who cares what anyone else thinks. But for argument's sake, if we were to take this debate around the correctness of save scumming in games seriously for just a moment, I think that Baldur's Gate 3 makes a uniquely compelling case for the concept beyond other games. This strategy, far from ruining the game, has actually made for a far more engaging experience for me than it would have been otherwise. And I think it all comes down to what kind of game Baldur's Gate 3 is relative to those other titles in which save scumming is possible. Those games where that test of skill, of your ability to strategize and overcome a tough foe, forms more or less the entirety of that game's mechanical narrative. You know, did you really achieve anything if the only reason you won a battle was because you optimised all of the challenge out of it? Now, again, I don't think that question is any reason not to do something you want to with a game you bought. But the best way I can think of to illustrate why Baldur's Gate 3 might be different is to lay out an in-game scenario for you. Say you boot up the game, you spend an inordinate amount of time painstakingly crafting your character, with all their spells and background that will help shape their approach to the environment and its denizens. A wellspring of narrative potential. As the game opens, your character has been captured and infected with a mind flayer parasite. You've fought your way off your captor's ship and are just starting to make your way through the world. You come across a potential companion, fascinated with how the nuances of their backstory might intermingle with yours, informing the lengthy relationship you will inevitably develop, with all of its twists and turns along the- Oh wait, we got ambushed by some wee goons and the dice rolls didn't go my way. My character is dead now, I guess. So much for that potential tale. Baldur's Gate 3 is, at its core, Dungeons and & Dragons, and the few times I've played D&D in real life, combat has been by far my least favourite aspect of proceedings. The often immense challenge presented to new, inexperienced characters or parties, as well as the sheer length of many brawls, always felt to me like it brought whatever momentum we might otherwise have been building up to a screeching halt, with characters dying before we even got a chance to know them, to explore them, all thanks to an errant dice roll. And all of this always left me wondering, what might have happened if we just avoided that scenario altogether? What if we could just have a do-over for the sake of the story? Something that, due to the sanctity of the dice, a DM would never allow. But in a way, it's fine there, because the dynamic is different, more overtly social. It's a good time just navigating that chaos with buddies. In the video game I'm playing by myself though, that character is everything really. That same combat scenario stings all the more because the loss of that character, especially so early on and seemingly by accident, feels like such a waste of that narrative potential. You know, character comes into world and is immediately slaughtered. It's hardly the most gripping story ever told. I didn't get to know them yet. Struggle and failure are crucial parts of drama, for sure, but only when you've spent enough time with a character to know what that struggle, that failure, might mean to them personally. And so, I found that the best way to avoid such a waste of potential is to say, well, if I just roll back and take that left turn where I previously went right, answer that one question in a way where I can leave, then I can avoid that scenario that so unceremoniously 
nearly obliterated me altogether, at least for the moment, so that I might indeed get to know that character better. As far as I see it, this is not me cheating myself out of experiencing the game at its fullest. Quite the opposite, actually. It's me feeling like the game has cheated me out of a meaningful story, arbitrarily cutting short my narrative ambitions before they even had the chance to take shape. As I say, as with any good story, failure and struggle will form a part of that narrative. But in that regard, thought also has to be given to pacing. The sudden appearance of an overwhelming foe that decimates your party might make sense as a plot point, with the remaining member struggling to make sense of what happened. It could very well be an event that shapes that character. Which is why, crucially, my use of save scumming in Baldur's Gate 3 isn't merely limited to those moments of abject failure. I will save scum if a choice I made feels like I got through a quest too smoothly. Where save scumming in other games might just amount to fixing a mistake, optimising a route towards a goal that limits any hardships you were previously coming up against, the goal here is not efficiency. It's not to see all all of the content, indeed the sheer breadth of potential routes for characters to go down, means that there isn't really a way of min-maxing all of the content in BG3. Instead, it's purely about what makes the most interesting story, what creates the most compelling conflicts between characters and gets them into the most enjoyable situations. Merely finding the best method to acquire the most XP isn't what I'm here for. While save scumming might allow me to circumnavigate those moments that require the most out of my characters for vanishingly little narratively in return, it also allows me to steer more directly into those rockier instances of dialogue of taking a chance, allowing one character to try and talk to a potential threat, even when I have another character that might be able to get through that encounter in fewer, more obvious choices, because that's the kind of challenge, one of social tension and internal politics, that doesn't require as much out of me as combat, but more directly leads to the kinds of chaos that I so love about this game. Those more nuanced dice rolls that lead to the stories I'm personally far more interested in. In short, I don't see Baldur's Gate 3 as merely a game about achieving victory in combat. Instead, it's a tool for crafting narrative. A frankly unbelievably flexible one at that. Even with the abundant quality of its written dialogue, what impresses more is just how much of it there is. How responsive the game's characters are to whatever choice you could possibly make. Where the daftest, most game-breaking thing you could do is met with 30,000 lines of dialogue about how that daft thing is now the centre of the universe. And that dialogue is at a level of quality that most games reserve for only their most main of main quests. It is astonishing really. And for me, combat is pretty consistently the least interesting aspect of those stories. To be clear, not entirely avoidable, still flexible in the approaches offered, and not absent of its own narrative potential as a result. But what save scumming allows me to do is to more effectively craft scenarios where that combat has a chance to really mean something to my characters. It's a pacing device, one that if you're not vibing with where your story is headed, you should feel absolutely zero shame in using in abundance. You're using this tool in order to tell the story you want to, and in the end, that's all that really matters. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, all that daft YouTube stuff. It really helps the channel and it means the world. A massive thanks as well to my patrons who you can see on screen and are all getting access to exclusive, fully produced videos that aren't available here. Your continued support is what allows me to keep going with the work I do on this channel in a sustainable way, and I seriously cannot express how grateful I am for that. You are all the best. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsyuk, Mel Meek, Michael Tritt, Rickety Cricket, Cameron Siniseros, Urban Cheese, Charles J. Liu, Alistair Dunn, Vitautis Catarsis, Dolly Bowman, Young Condor, David Carstens, Tom Webster, Danis Sikowskis, Jordan Midler, Christopher Faherty, Nicholas Villeneuve, Ruth Natman, Yoga Shishbande, Leah Cinello, Captain Knusprich, Bryce Snyder, CPJ MLT Limited, David Bjork, Timothy Jones, Matthew Grover, Tommy Carver Chaplin, Shardfire, Lynn Browning, Dallas Keen, Charlie Kimball, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.